live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. The Conference Championship. One game away from the Super Bowl. We've had over a hundred of these bad boys be played over the years, and since I did this a few weeks ago during Wild Card Weekend, I figured that this would be a good time to bring it back and look at the top five worst calls in the history of the Conference Championship. These are the calls that pretty much ended the team's season, or came awfully close to doing so. Any call that is borderline, like this debatable forward lateral from the 2001 AFC Championship, isn't even close to consideration. These calls have to be egregiously bad. To give you an idea of how bad some of these calls are, remember the Bird Emanuel catch? Not even in the top five. Miles Jack wasn't down? Not even in the top five. The Ellis Hobbs Phantom Face Guarding call in the 2006 AFC Championship? You guessed it, not even in the top five. Some of these calls are that bad, to the point where if a call is even 1% debatable as to whether or not it was the right one, it's not on the list. With all that being said, it's time to unveil the worst of the worst. These are the top five worst calls in the history of the conference championship. The 2018 postseason was not a good time to be an official. Without a shred of recency bias, there are going to be multiple calls from 2018 conference championships that wind up on this list. And I think you know where one of them is going. But we'll start with this one from the later game between the Kansas City Chiefs and the New England Patriots. If the Chiefs win, they go to their first Super Bowl since 1969. If the Patriots win, well, it's just another day at the office for Brady and Belichick. Kansas City starts off slow, trailing 14 0 at the half. However, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City offense eventually get things going. And after two fourth quarter touchdowns, the Chiefs have the lead for the first time all game. Midway through the fourth, Kansas City leads 21 17. The Patriots are facing a critical second and seven. And sure enough, Tom Brady's pass falls incomplete. The Chiefs have all the momentum at this point, as it looks like New England is going to be in a difficult third down situation. Except Chris Jones gets called for roughing the passer. This call is a special kind of bad for a few reasons. Number one, it clearly wasn't roughing the passer. There was no contact to the head whatsoever. Brady barely even got touched here. Even Gene Steratore, who was the rules expert for CBS during this game, said that this was not roughing, saying that Chris Jones did a swing and a miss here. And number two, an almost identical play happened in the third quarter when Patrick Mahomes got hit, and the referees didn't call it. There was no consistency whatsoever. New England kept their drive alive after that gift of a penalty and wound up scoring a touchdown to retake the lead. The Pats would eventually win the game in overtime. A lot of people think that roughing the passer penalties have gone too far, and this play definitely did not silence those critics. Speaking of former AFL teams trying to dethrone dominant AFC dynasties, let's hop back 40 years for this next play. The Pittsburgh Steelers and the Houston Oilers have developed quite the rivalry by this point. One year prior to this game, the AFC Central foes met in the AFC Championship, although that one wasn't particularly close, as Pittsburgh won that one convincingly by a final score of 34-5. But on January 6, 1980, the game was a lot closer. In fact, it was so close that late in the third quarter, the Oilers were only down by seven and they had the ball. Despite starting deep in their own territory, the Oilers were able to get into the red zone. That's where one of the most infamous calls in NFL history occurs. Dan Pastorini hits Mike Redfro for a six-yard touchdown. Should be a tie ball game. But the referees ruled this one incomplete. Renfro had both feet in bounds and possession of the football. Somehow, referee Jim Tunney and field judge Bill O'Brien didn't see it that way. Houston had to settle for a field goal and would go on to lose the game 27-13, rooting their best shot ever at making it to a Super Bowl before they eventually moved to Tennessee. What might be even crazier than this no call is what Steelers cornerback Ron Johnson said afterwards. He thought that it wasn't a catch, saying Renfro bobbled it all the way to the ground. We both had our hands on the ball when we went out of bounds. That explanation is absurd, since as you can clearly see, Johnson never had the ball at any point. This call was bad, and it was so bad to the point where kicker Tony Frisch said that if in his home country of Austria, a call that bad was made, they would shoot him. And yet, that's only number four. Buckle up, because it's about to get a whole lot worse. In the 1977 AFC Championship, as the Broncos were driving on the Raiders, Craig Morton threw a pass to Jack Dolman. Dolman catches the ball after going to the ground, then gets up untouched and runs his way into the end zone for an incredible touchdown. The referees ruled this one incomplete, even though the ball never hit the ground. It's a horrible call, 
made even worse by the fact that instead of getting a huge touchdown that would have put Denver up 21-3 in the third and would have made it almost impossible for the Raiders to come back, they didn't score on the drive. Yeah, that play didn't even make the top five. Why? Because that wasn't even the worst call from that game. Earlier in the third quarter, the referees had a call that was somehow even worse, to the point where Denver never should have been put in a position to put the game away anyways. With the Broncos leading 7-3, looking to make it to their first Super Bowl in franchise history, Morton hands the ball off to Rob Lytle. Lytle fumbles. Mike McCoy recovers, and it looks like he's going to take it all the way. It should be Raider ball, and maybe even a Raider lead. There is just one problem. Headlinesman Ed Marion said that there was no fumble, even though by literally every definition, this was a fumble. Denver wound up scoring on the very next play to take a 14-3 lead. The call was so bad that Pete Rozell not only acknowledged that the call was wrong, but used instant replay during a few preseason games the following year just as a trial run. As a side note, if you want to learn more about instant replay and its origins, then click the card in the upper right corner. So maybe that catch rule that complete was a makeup call for what happened earlier. You know an officiating crew is bad when both teams get robbed of seemingly obvious touchdowns. Look, anytime a call is so bad that it inspires an entire rule change, you know you messed up somewhere. And with that, we go back to the 2018 postseason, as we head to the Superdome for this battle between the Los Angeles Rams and the New Orleans Saints. I'm not even sure I have to give too much context for this play. You all know what's coming. Third down, tie game, less than two minutes left. If the Saints get a first down, they can just run out the clock, then kick the field goal and go on to their second Super Bowl in franchise history. On third down, Breeze tries to hit Tommy Lee Lewis. However, Roby Coleman gets to Lewis way beforehand, and there should be a pretty obvious pass interference call or an illegal hit call or both. You know what happens next. The referees, for some reason, call absolutely nothing, even though this is blatant pass interference. The Saints have to settle for three and give the Rams the ball back, instead of the alternative, which was running out the clock and hitting the chip shot field goal to win the game with no time left. Los Angeles scores on their ensuing drive and wins it in overtime. You know it's bad when even Roby Coleman was looking around after the play trying to find the inevitable flag, and then told reporters after the game that he was shocked that it got away with that. This call was so bad that it prompted legal action and prompted a rule change for the following season, allowing pass interference to be a reviewable penalty. You might be thinking to yourself how this isn't the number one choice. How could this play possibly not be number one? Well, as bad as that no call was, we see missed pass interference penalties a lot. Granted, one of this magnitude is insane, but it happens. Our number one play is a call so bad that I genuinely have never seen anything else like this in my life. It's a call you never expect a Pop Warner referee that's a dad pulled out of the stands to make, let alone an NFL referee. Prepare yourselves. December 26, 1965. It's the Green Bay Packers taking on the Baltimore Colts in the Western Conference playoff. Because both teams finished with the same record, this conference championship had to be played to determine who would face the Cleveland Browns in the NFL championship. After three quarters, the Colts are looking like they're going to pull off the upset as they lead it 10 to 7. There's two minutes left in the game. Don Chandler and the Packers are lining up for a 22 yard field goal. If Chandler hits it, the Packers tie the game and likely force overtime. If Chandler misses, the Colts pretty much have this game won. There have been tens of thousands of NFL games ever and millions of plays. What you're about to witness is without a doubt, the worst call in the history of the NFL. The Packers are now within field goal range and Don Chandler is on to try a field goal that could tie the game and force it into overtime. And he's kicked it and the Green Bay Packers and the Baltimore Colts are now tied in the fourth quarter and Packer land is going crazy. Uh, I, I I'm sorry, did he just say the Packers made this field goal? Are you blind? The referee here, oddly enough, is the same one that blew the call in the AFC Championship with the Oilers. It's Jim Tunney. How was he still employed after this? And what's insane is that even 40 years after this play, Tunney did an interview and still defended his call, saying it was correct. You want to know how I know the kick didn't go in, other than the fact that I have eyeballs? Watch Chandler's reaction after he hits it. He looks disgusted with himself. He's angry. That's not the reaction you make when you just hit the game time field goal in a playoff game. That's the reaction you make when you just blew it. I've legitimately never seen a referee call a field goal good when it wasn't, especially when it didn't even touch a crossbar or a post in the process. Anyways, the kick sent the game to overtime. 
where the Packers wound up winning it 13-10. Colts owner Carol Rosenblum said after the game, we didn't deserve to lose. There was no justice out there today. If there was ever an instance where a result should have been retroactively awarded, this is the one right here. This isn't a judgment call like pass interference. Either the ball went through the uprights or it didn't. And clearly, it didn't here. Especially with instant replay in place, we're never seeing a call like this again today. And thank goodness. There might be some bad calls in today's games, but I guarantee you that nothing in NFL history will ever be as bad as what transpired in 1965. Enjoy the games, everyone. Fingers crossed this list doesn't become outdated by the end of the day. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jarrogator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.